Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another Rail Sociedad career mode. Now, before we get into the first game of the episode, which is actually going to be against Barcelona, that's the first live bit of gameplay. I've gone ahead and played a bunch of games off camera. Let's go ahead and take a look at the highlights, including some very big games in the Spanish Cup. So the first game was up against Leganes. Not the best team, but not one of the worst teams. And I was expecting to get a win away from home here. By the way, I'm really not a fan of the home and away kit, so I'm using the third kit as much as I can in the away games. I think it looks so much better. I hope you guys agree. I absolutely love this third kit. What I'm going to do is try and keep this kit, but change the colours, and I think I'm going to use it as the goalkeeper kit in the next season. So uh, it'll be green. That'll look really cool. We're going we're to show you the kits that me and Liam have been working on very, very soon. But anyway, we were 2-0 up in this game and it was a pretty easy victory in the end. 94 minutes into injury time, they finally blew the whistle. And we go into our first Spanish Cup game up against Ibar. Now, Ibar actually have a very nice team. They've got some players in there that could damage us. We get off to a great start in this game. We dominate them. And then in the 42nd minute, we finally get the opening goal. And it's William Jose on his weaker foot. That is actually a very nice goal. I really wanted to get the replay of that because um, with his left foot, I just wasn't expecting it to go in, but somehow it did. And then late in the second half this time, we managed to put the game beyond doubt. A goal from Yanazai as he ran through one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, slotted it into that bottom left corner and then the golf swing as the celebration. Very nice indeed. Next game, we have Athletic Club, the team that I almost did the career mode with. It was between these two teams. I went with Real Sociedad, and I think it was a good decision in the end. I've absolutely loved this career mode so far. I'm having so much fun with it. And actually, one of the reasons I'm enjoying it so much is this guy, Dominguez. What a signing. I'm so glad he got voted in. I absolutely love the guy. I love the fact that he's got the face mod as well, which looks absolutely incredible. Um, but really, it's just he's such a good player. And also, another signing that I recently made is doing bits for me. Zaracho came in at Cam for this game. And uh, yeah, just absolutely loving him. He's so quick and he's so agile. He's got a lethal shot, a really good pass. And I think he'll turn out to be a really, really good player for us. But we go back into the Spanish Cup after that last victory. And uh, it's Atletico Madrid. Of course it is. Two legs in the semi-finals here. We take the lead in the first leg and it's William Jose. I decided to use the second team because, well, I'm trying to do well in the league and I need to prioritise what's going on with the team, you know, and resting players and oh my God. Yep, Morata with an absolute perler. Look at the lift and the drop he got towards the end. It's a ridiculous finish. That should not be going in. And when it did go in, my mouth was just... My, my jaw was dropped to the desk. Like, it was ridiculous. And then he goes and smashes in another one. I mean, what what is that? How is he doing this? Morata makes it 2-1. They've turned it around. And it's like he's not even trying. There's something about Morata in my career modes. I know in the Sunderland save, he went to Man City. And he was often top scorer. Scoring bangers. And he's doing the same now. And then just to add insult to injury... They score a free kick. Three absolutely fantastic goals from Atletico Madrid here to take a 3-1 away lead into the second, le second leg sorry, of the Spanish Cup. It really wasn't a result I needed at this time. The second team really struggled against them. So I guess you could say it's, it's my bad. But, you know, it's just a game at the end of the day. I could play better. I just didn't do enough. But anyway, back into the league now. And we've got Ibar again. Now, we recently beat them. So I was feeling pretty confident going into this game. And look at this for a save. Oh, <laughs> Ruli has been so good for us. I'm really glad we recalled him. It made sense. An 81 rated keeper. Why would I have him loaned out? I can have him in the first team. So we made the save and then they just scored the, the very next chance to go 1-0 up. And um, when we played them before, as I said, they've got good players in there. But they weren't really uh, using those individual players, you know, to the best of their ability. But in this game... They really were. And that is, I mean, it's just, how can I justify that to you guys? What the hell is going on with my defenders? They're just completely left alone there. And we're 2-0 down. But thankfully, we get on the ball here with Baron Achea. Yes, I think I've learned how to say it now. And he manages to get us a penalty. 
And of course, the captain will step up to take it. It is going to be Oyarzabal into the bottom right corner. And that is now a chance to get back in this game. Maybe get a draw, but then why not just throw away another goal? You know, why not? We are now 3-1 down against Ibar. And it's going to be a, uh, a real difficulty to get back into this game. We do get a goal back, but it's way too late. We played three minutes of injury time. I've gone to pick up the ball, but as soon as they took the kickoff, of course, the referee's going to blow the whistle there. So we do lose. We, we lost to Ibar. Really not great, is it? Very, very frustrating. But hey, what can you do? And this is the table going into the next few games. We are in fifth place. We're quite comfortable there. But of course, a win here against Valencia would do us a lot of good. Playing at home this time as well. And I don't mind the home kit so much, especially in the daylight, but I just get a bit sick of the uh, the second kit. I don't know why. The green just doesn't do it for me. But we start off so well here. This is a beautiful finish from Porto there. I'm so glad they signed him in real life. Remember when I did my Girona uh, youth squad career mode last year? He was a player that started at Girona, and he was really good. And I've been able to use him again. Isaac there making it 2-0, by the way. And then the captain makes it 3-0. Um... Never mind, I guess. Some, something distracted him. There, there was a, a really good looking woman in the crowd and he just got distracted. But we still get the 2-0 win there. And that is a massive win. We really needed that after losing against Ibar. And now look at that. Straight into the next game. I think it's Villa de Lead. Villa de Lead. Villa de Lead. Villa de Lead, maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm still learning some of the team names. I, sometimes I feel like I can say it when I'm not recording. And then as soon as I hit record, my mind goes blank and I can't say Villa, Villa de Lead, Villa do Lead. Anyway, who cares? Fantastic first goal. Go back and watch it if you want to see that flick for the assist. But it is going to be Dominguez who uh, thankfully is in the right place at the right time. I would have been very upset if I had lost this game or, you know, just missed that chance and then gone on to lose the game. But then into the final few moments of the game, we have a few more chances to try and make it 2-0. But it wasn't to be. We are going to go ahead and hold on to the 1-0. And that is three points in the bag. But then we pick up a month injury to Erdegaard from an, an injury in training, which is obviously very frustrating. Going into this absolutely massive game at the Wanda M Metropolitano, I want to call it. Ooh, I don't know. Hopefully I haven't got that one wrong. Otherwise, I'm going to have to... Yeah, edit that one out. But um, no, actually, I'm going to leave it in. I'm going to risk it. We get off to a great start. Zaracho scores in place of Erdegaard, who's going to be out for a couple of weeks. And uh, it's a really good start to the game. Really quite a tough game. Not much was going on. And then in the second half, I knew I needed two more goals. They're still going to be winning on away goals, even if I equalize here. And Jovic does equalize for us. He makes it 3-3. But as of right now... I'm still heading out of the competition. And what a pass that is, by the way, from Marino, I think it was. So I tried. I, I tried my best. I had a couple of chances here and there, but nothing solid. And unfortunately, we get knocked out on away goals. And you can see Barcelona are winning 3-0 on aggregate with a game to go. The fact it's 3-0 after one leg is absolutely mad. But anyway, let's get into the live portion of this video. I think overall we did pretty well. You can see here in the table, we are comfortably in fourth place. We've got a nice little gap above Real Betis now, but Barcelona are still the team to beat. Invincible so far with about 12 games. Well, 12 games, not, not about 12 games, exactly 12 games to go. Atletico Madrid are above Real Madrid by quite a distance now as well. I mean, it's pretty obvious that the top two is done. There's no way that either Real Madrid or us are going to catch them. It is what it is, but the top four is still on, and I'm really, really happy about that. Now, I noticed as well in the menu, look at this, Saul, the central midfielder for Atletico Madrid, who recently uh, created a bit of a media storm. He, he tweeted about a new club, and everyone thought, oh my God, he's leaving. I was one of the first to say, I was streaming at the time, that no, 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 there's something else going on here. It's like an esports team or something, Saul Esports or whatever. But actually, it turns out he's got, I think it was a, a fourth tier Spanish club that he now owns or something like that. So he's not going anywhere, but he's doing very, very well in my career mode. He's actually top scorer along with Iglesias. Now, I don't know too much about Iglesias. I'm actually going to have a look at this guy. So Iglesias for Real Betis. Okay, so he's 
a six foot two striker with a massive release clause. I've not really looked into this guy. Interesting. So he's not very quick, but he's very, very strong. And I'm guessing his finishing's ridiculous. Oh, okay. Probably around 82, 83, 84, something like that. I'm surprised he's having that good of a season. But then again, Real Batiste are up there right now. They are, they're doing very well. So I guess it kind of makes sense that they've got a, uh, a top scorer there. But uh, I'm more surprised about Saul, to be honest. A midfielder getting top scorer ahead of Eden Hazard, Luis Suarez, Aspas, Messi. Jovic is up there for us. Fekir as well for Real Betis. He's been an incredible signing for them in real life and in FIFA, it would seem. But anyway, now it is time for the big game. Can we be the first team in La Liga to beat Barcelona this season. We did very well against them last time. And actually, we were kind of unlucky, I would say, not to get the win. So maybe, even though we're going to the Camp Nou, we can get lucky and produce a win. That would be unbelievable. Zaracho comes in. He will be starting. I do not have Erdegaard fit. He is still injured at the moment, which is a bit of a shame. You need your best players for games like this, but uh, Yanazai will come onto the bench because of that, and he can play at Cam, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, I'm going to go with Porto and Oyarzabal on the wings with Jovic, I think, up top. I know Isaac's been good for me, but Jovic, I just, I feel like he's just that little bit, bit a little bit better. He's, he's more likely to grab a winner, I think, than Isaac. We're going to go with Marino and Dominguez. Fantastic partnership in midfield there. That kind of pivot. I mean, the fact that they're so well-rounded, you know, both players are kind of good at everything is uh, is really good. We're going to go with Llorente and Pau Torres, Gaia and Tavares, Ruli in goal. I don't need to make any other changes. We've just got to hope that players like Griezmann have an off day and, yeah, miss chances like that. How is he not scoring that? I've got no idea. To stay good in goal, I guess. He's good. I mean, it's quite off-putting knowing that you've got to beat a keeper as good as him. But anyway, here we go, guys. Let's have a look at the lineup because, of course, I cannot watch the uh, the actual graphics pop up because then I get a strike. But Griezmann is playing on the left, Suarez up top, and, of course, Messi on the right. They're going with Arthur, De Jong, and Zakaria. Okay, Albert, Koulibaly, Longley, and that Marea guy again, and to Stegen in goal. So that's the teams. And I'm actually a little bit concerned that they've gone with Messi, Griezmann and Suarez as the front three. Zakaria in midfield as well. What a signing that is. I was tempted at one point before we signed Dominguez to add Zakaria, but I thought it's a little bit, bit of a strange signing that going to Real Sociedad. But he's gone to Barcelona. But Griezmann's offside there. I thought he was onside, to be fair. So how do I win this game? Hmm... I think avoid the midfield, really. We want to go down the wings. I do not want Arthur and De Jong getting the ball, playing it through to Messi, Suarez, Griezmann. So I think the key will be to probably try and hit them down the wings. But sometimes it's not always possible. That's a nice ball into Zaracho, though. Can we maybe get a cross in? Oh, he's lost it. Oh, okay. That's definitely going to be a yellow card as soon as the ball goes out. Real Madrid are currently playing Betis, so that's quite good for us. And Madrid have already scored. Don't forget, though, we can actually potentially go above Real Madrid if they have some more bad results and we win our games. But it looks like they're probably going to win against Betis. That's a good tackle, Marino. Oh, hang on. Look at Yozabal over the top. Oh, that was a bad pass. That was a really bad pass there from Zaracho. And now... Here comes Suarez into Griezmann. Oh, Llorente steps in and steals it. I've been playing so many squad battles on my stream lately, which, by the way, I'll be doing again tonight. So make sure you uh, follow my Twitch stream. I'd really appreciate it. Twitch.tv slash officialmgh. There's a link in the description. I'll be live at 8 p.m. tonight. But I've been playing so many squad battles. Oh, my God. That playing career mode all of a sudden feels really strange. It's completely different. It really is. The difficulty in squad battles is ridiculous sometimes. There are games that you literally cannot do anything. There you go, Tavares. Nicely done. But yeah, please do check me out on Twitch. I'd really appreciate it. We're in. Jovic up against Longley. Can he finish it? We're going to sweat it. No. Wow. I completely ballsed that one up. Wow. Well done, Matt. Good job. Oh, no. He's toying with me. Arthur is such a good player. Oh, as soon as I say that, he passes it straight to Dominguez, who's had a very, very good first season. And look at him go here. 
Zaratra may be in behind. Oh, I don't think he's going to quite get there. Honestly, it's been one of those first halves that I just regret not putting a chance away. How I didn't score that last chance where I sweated it, I, pff, I'm an idiot, basically. But there is half time, nil-nil at the break. So far, Barcelona have been a bit sloppy. I've got to say, it is weird. I found it much, much harder to play against Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid, to be fair, and even some of the other clubs. Every time we've played Barcelona so far, I've been a little bit underwhelmed by them. They haven't been that great. Thing is, now that I've said that, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to have a terrible second half. Griezmann's in here. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Yep. Straight away, Barcelona score with their first attack. You're kidding me. Griezmann destroys Tavares there. And then, oh, the finish from Suarez. He's still got it. He may be a little bit older now, but he's still top, top quality. And we find ourselves 1-0 down after I say, yeah, they're not doing so well. They're a bit underwhelming, aren't they? I'm just, I shouldn't say things like that. I should just keep it to myself. Come on, instant reply. Poor two. Into the box to Stegen reaches that somehow. And there's no one there to pick up the loose ball. And now here come Barcelona again into Lionel Messi, who's lost it. Hang on. Oh, thought I was going to get it forward. Here's Messi again. He's lost it again. That is not Lionel Messi. Where is the real Messi? <laughs> here is Zaracho now. Try and go around long late. That's a foul. That's such a, an annoying foul because I was just getting through. I'm going to pass this to the right. Flick that on and then hit it with Llorente. Oh, any other player but Llorente, and that might have been a goal. Maybe this time. Let's see if we can get a good cross in with his left foot. Oh, hello. Zaracho. Morer. Whoever that guy is, I hate him. I hate him with a passion. <laughs> How have I not scored? It's so unfortunate that he was just in the right place at the right time. Look at the possession, by the way. We're actually uh, we're having a little bit more of the ball than Barcelona, but they're having it in areas that I guess are more effective. Although that cross was pretty damn nice. We probably should have scored that. They've taken off Lionel Messi. Wow. That's pretty weird, if you ask me. Why would you do that? They brought on Usmane Dembele. Oh, that's a good ball. No, it's not. It's not a good ball. Why would you take off Messi, though? That's crazy. Go on, Dominguez. Go on. Keep running into Iyazabal. He's not going to get there ahead of Koulibaly. Oh, it was a dangerous pass, though. Unfortunately, we've only got a couple of minutes to go. I don't think we're going to be able to turn this around, guys. But maybe we can rescue a point. I just need one good chance. But at this rate, I'm not even going to get the ball in their half. They're so good at retaining possession. And then if they lose it, they win it back so quickly. Right, here we go. Got to do something now. Oh, wow. Wow. What a bad pass that was. Just blow the whistle, ref. Just end it. There's no point. This team is going to go unbeaten for the whole season. They're 2-0 up. Yep. Barcelona will not lose a game. They might not lose a game in the entirety of this series. Next season and the season after that, I might not be able to beat them still. I... Pfft. They're so bloody good. The first half, they were bad. But this second half, they've been another level. Real Madrid did get a 2-0 win. So they won while we lost. That's not great. Mm. Now we're six points behind them. Okay. It, it's not great. But of course, we're still ahead of Real Betis by five points. That's good. It looks like they lost. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. They played Real Madrid. So, yeah, that's, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. You know what? This season was all about getting top four. And uh, so far, that's what we're going to get. We actually do have a game against Real Madrid very soon. We've got two games in between, but I'm running out of time. I'm meant to be streaming in about half an hour. Um, we're doing like a watch along of the uh, Leverkusen versus Bayern game. So I, I do really want to get the Real Madrid game in this episode. So let's see what clubs they are. So we've got Osasuna at home. And then Alaves away. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate both these games and then play the Real Madrid one. Erdegaard is fit, but I'm actually going to use the second team for this one. It is a home game. We should be beating Osasuna, even with the second team. And we do. Just about, though. Oh, that was close. Just a 1-0 win. Zabeldia getting the goal. Whereabouts are Alaves, then? Alaves are 12th. Can I use the second team for this one as well? Maybe. I mean, it depends how long we've got left until the Real Madrid game. Um, I'll consider it. Tavares is now, or Tavares, sorry, 78 rated. It's unbelievable, isn't it? 
Um, how long until the Real Madrid game? Oh, it's, there's loads of time. So we can use the first team for sure. And that does mean that Erdegaard is going to start. That's good. He's back. He's not fully fit, but I'm sure he'll be okay in this game. And we get a 3-0 win. So I'm guessing he was uh, he was pretty good in that match. We actually made it 2-0 before half time, And then Zaracho, with just a few minutes left on the clock, made it 3-0. Okay, into the game against Real Madrid now. Let's have a look at the table just before we do go into that match. And we're three points behind them, having played an extra game, though. So I need to win this game if I want any hope of finishing in the top three. Um, I don't think it's going to happen regardless, but we'll try our best. And I've got a feeling we're going to see some growth here. There you go. Baron Shea. Ba Bar Baronet Shea. Baron Shea. Ba Baron Shea. I, th I think I'm getting there. We're getting there. And by the way, actually, I completely forgot to show you guys. He's got a face now. Uh, I've, I've got a mod for him. Baron Shea. Here he is. In all his glory, he has an official face. And that reminds me, actually, there will be a vote at the end of the season. There's going to be a few votes, but one of them will be which centre-back I want to sign for next season. And I've got faces for them as well. Ruben Diaz is going to be one of them. Demiral is going to be the other and Mukiele as well. So those are the three centre-backs that I'm interested in signing for next season. So, uh, yeah, that will be a vote nearer the time. Also, we'll vote on the new kits. We've got a home, away and a third kit to choose. Uh, there's going to be a few options for each. But uh, anyway, why am I talking about all this? Let's just get in the game against Madrid. Can I just say, by the way, it is one of the most beautiful stadiums, I think, in the game. I absolutely love it. I would love to go into a stadium like this one day. One that's just so open and you can see, like, the landscape behind it. Absolutely love that. But looking at this Real Madrid team, it looks very similar to the one that we played before. Let's have a look at the lineups here. And you can see mine there. The only change I've made is El Estondo comes in because, um, unfortunately, Pau Torres has a one-week injury through training. Hazard, Benzema and Bale as the front three. Cruz, Van der Beek and Valverde. Marcelo, Ramos, Fernandez, Corona and Courtois. Okay, interesting. Let's go for it. We can beat these lot. We can absolutely do this and make it just that little bit more likely that we can fight for the top three. You would have seen in the uh, the post-commentary part of the video that uh, in the Spanish Cup, almost called it the German Cup, that was close, in the Spanish Cup, uh, Real Madrid got knocked out by Barcelona 3-0 over two legs. And in the league, you can clearly see there's a big gap. So I think, unfortunately, right now, Barcelona are just a lot better than Real Madrid. I say unfortunately because I want it to be really tough for me. I want it to be... Real Madrid and Barcelona are just so equal. Really, really strong teams. But right now, there is definitely a little bit of a gap, especially when it comes to the CPU results. But um, yeah, when I last played Real Madrid, I actually thought they were much harder than Barcelona. But I think I changed my mind in that second half against Barcelona just recently because they were so damn good. But we'll see how Real Madrid get on in this game. Here is Corona. Is it Jesus Corona? Oh, wow. Oh, he almost scored. That would have been bad. Mustn't forget as well, we've got Jovic and Erdegaard up against their parent clubs. So we'll see how they get on. Oh, my God. Erdegaard has just toyed with them. Oh, wow, what a save. And just saying, I met Thibaut Courtois over the lockdown. We played pro clubs together. Can you believe it? I was in a Discord call with webcams on. I, I was literally in a room with Thibaut Courtois. Pretty amazing. I've got him added on Discord. He's my friend now. Okay, <laughs> he's my friend. Every time Madrid come forward, it's with Bale. Thankfully, so far, he hasn't been able to do too much. His poor two. Oh, why did I dummy that? I'm addicted to doing the dummies at the moment. It does seem to work quite a lot of the time, but it really didn't work there. I'm trying to pin down Madrid's players in their own half, and it is, it's quite effective. They're not really getting forward too often but uh, maybe I've spoke too soon here comes Hazard he's gonna turn around and pass it backwards come on the CPU need to get going here I actually want a game there we go we've got a we've got the ball back let's give it back to a about I should have played it on the left poor two was open oh I'm gutted oh no that's not the ball I wanted it could still work out ah get, let me shoot let me get the ball out of my feet at least Jeez, I think that's going to be half time. Unfortunately, we're not going to get another chance, maybe. Nope, the referees ended it there. 
Play it down the left side. Porto's in a load of space here. I think we go for a cross maybe to Jovic. Go on. Why has he gone behind him? Why, game? That was the perfect opportunity to just put it in the air for him to just get so much power on another header. You know, he's, he's done it before in this career mode. He scores those headers quite a lot, but it was a bad cross. Now, here's Hazard. Can I try and win the tackle here? He's going to get a cross in if we're not careful. I mean, we've done okay there, but still they've got it. Oh, no. No. Oh, my God. Okay. I don't want to watch that again. Nope. Nope. Didn't happen. My defense was perfection there. Definitely wasn't my bad. Definitely not. Hey, that's a yellow for sure. That's a good cross. Jovic. Oh, he's put it over the bar. Yeah, this game isn't going to plan, guys. I don't think we're going to beat them. But you never know. There's still time. No. Oh, Gaia just about got there. Let's go forward. Come on. Where's the runs? Oh, he's not going to get there. No runs being made. I just need a bit more going forward. Maybe I need to make a change. I think Jovic is probably going to still be our main man. So maybe I take Porto out and bring in Baron Achea. And maybe Zaracho instead of Erdegaard. Let's just make a double change. Let's see if a couple of fresh legs up top is going to make a difference. Oh, no. Hazard's in behind. Tavares is not quick enough. Cross comes in. Oh, actually, he recovered well. Just a few minutes to go here. Oh, what a ball. Over the top now. No. Oh, that's so frustrating. If I got a good pass off there, maybe we would have a chance. But I think that's probably going to be it now. Absolutely gutted. Get it out. Okay, quick, 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 quick. Just go, kick it out. Oh my god, it's hit my player, wow. Please win that, Jovic. No. Oh! No! Game! Stop doing this to me! Come on! Oh, that's it. That's definitely it now. It's going to be another loss. Damn it. I mean, it's against the big, the big teams that I'm chasing right now. Oh god, that was almost another goal. Get it out! I, I guess it's okay because it's just season one. I've still got quite a few players that need to get better if I'm really going to be competing with the big guys. It could have been worse, just a 1-0 loss, but it's so frustrating. My passes, man, they just didn't work. My best player rating was 7.3. Gaia, left back. That's how bad that game was, honestly. Right, into training, both... These young players are now 79 rated, so they're on their way to 80. I think when they get to 80, I'm going to switch them out. Um, but that's going to be it for this episode. As uh, Yanazai complains that he's not playing enough. I mean, to be fair, he isn't. So I do get it. I'm going to say you still have your place in the squad, just not as a first team player. But then again, his contract says important first team player. So he's not expecting to play every single game. But anyway, let's uh, let's get to the next match and we can have a look at the table, an updated version of the table. And you would have just seen there, I sold a player. We'll have a look at that in a moment. But we are in fourth place still. But Real Betis, although they've played an extra game, are now only one point behind us. Madrid move up to 69 points. And uh, that is definitely game over now. I don't think we're going to be able to catch them. Barcelona still haven't lost, of course. They're still winning every single bloody game. They've got three draws, though, so they are... One of them was us, wasn't it? But they aren't completely steamrolling the league, even though they, they basically are. But anyway, just before that game against Real Madrid, we had two offers come in. One was for Bautista, which we've gone ahead and accepted from Cagliari. They offered 4.8 million. Uh, we took it. And 7.7 uh, .7 million for Rodriguez from Leicester City. So... Two players have gone. Can you believe it? They're still going to be here until the end of the season, of course. Um, Sola wants more wages. No, mate. No. I need to sell him. And there's no way I'm giving him more money right now. But that's going to be it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go off and stream the Bundesliga watch along right now, which I cannot wait for. Um, when Arsenal start playing games, I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be doing watch alongs. Not every game, but some games. Uh, and Operation Arsenal is going to be back. Oh my god, I'm so excited for that. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go and do that now. I will be streaming again tonight at 8pm. We'll be doing some Ultimate Team, some Warzone. 
draw my thing maybe with a few friends that's what the streams are these days they're just like a bit of fun we have a, a load of different games we all play but uh, thank you so much for watching this and please do check out the stream later hopefully you've all just watched the Bundesliga watch along as well which would have been just before this video went live but uh, I will see you in the next episode as we almost want to wrap up the season and hopefully we will finish as high as possible